Það munar miklu að vera í námunni. Fjölbreytt fríðindi, sveigjanleg þjónusta, tveir fyrir einn í bíó, persónuleg ráðgjöf og góð þjónusta. Náman. Nýbökuð brauð á mótnana. Léttir réttir í hátegjinu. Kökur með kaffinu og fjölbreytt veisluþjónusta. Bakaramistarinn. We're not missing anyone, do you think? No, well, they are all here, on, on time. It's on time. something Perfect. special. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha. That's why I have to be Okay. I can underline that. I don't know that media is in time and a time. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, nice to see you again and welcome to uh, this press conference. Uh, Nice to restart again after the summer. But really looking forward to that. Uh, I just, I don't know if you're interested in what I think. Uh, I spoke to some of you about Aron Johansson, and uh, I would like just to say that, that, that uh, I mean, I talked to him several times now, and, and he, he took his decision, and he didn't break any rules. So for, for me, it's a kind of a moral question, but, but I just want to say that for him and myself, now his history, as it took his decision, we can do anything about it, and for us it's more important now to, to concentrate on the squad that we have, so uh, I, I'm of course disappointed that he chose to, to go to the US, but that's, that's how life is, so for us it's history now, and, and we have to focus on, on the players that we have. Otherwise, uh, I just want to say also, I'm really glad now for, uh, for what's happening in Icelandic football. I had the chance to, to follow the women's team, and they were, I think, really doing well. I mean, if you look upon the, the teams that were playing, I think they were as close as 100% as they could be with, with what they did, the performance, and reaching a quarterfinal, I mean, it's really, really good. Also, I talked to Jolly yesterday with the Breda Blick game, and... and uh, it's really, really nice that under 21 started so well, and also with a very young team. So I must say that the future for Icelandic team football and national teams looks really good. And the second thing that makes me really glad as, as, as Swedish citizens also is that Icelandic football, if you look upon the club football now, is almost as close as the Swedish clubs. All the Swedish clubs except Elfsborg is out from, from Europe play, and if you look upon FO and Breda Blick was what they have done. I mean, for instance, the game yesterday, I was really, really impressed to, to see the way they were playing. So, I mean, I haven't followed before I came here the, the club football so close in, in Iceland, but I, I, I think you can see how they perform and, and improve their performance all the time. So I think it's, it's really looking nice for Icelandic football now. And what is nice with Breda Blick too, when you see them, they have some young players playing. Two of them were playing in the under-21 or is in the under-21 squad and playing international matches with the club and also with the under-21 national team. That's the best school you can go in as a player. So I must say a lot of things looks really, really positive. For instance, see Thomas and Andre playing the way they did yesterday against a rather good team is, is really, really nice. And. Uh, Regarding to that, as you can see in the squad also, not only because they are playing well, we, we, we picked this time Christine and Johan also because we need more fullbacks. And these are two young, promising fullbacks, and they've done very well now in, in the league. So it's nice to can bring in some players also from, from the league. Otherwise, if you look on the squad, I spoke to Aaron a couple of days ago, and he's just beginning. I think he did his first training with, with the squad, so he could go into a little bit of contact with his shoulder. But he's not 100% yet, yet, so uh, we don't take any risks with him and hope that he will recover 100% for the games in, in, uh, in uh, September. Then we have... Uh, a question marks for some players, or at least one player. Salve, as you know, has moved to to Russia, and he is traveling now, and uh, had uh, problems with the visa, so he had to fix it. But Kjona spoke to him just one hour ago, and it looks like he will be coming on on uh, on to the squad. So that's good also. Birke Sevason also is a question mark, because he is expecting his child, one of his... Is it his third? Second? Third? Fourth. Fourth. 
Oh the, dear, he is productive. Uh, on Monday, so we don't know for sure if he is coming or not. Otherwise, if we look upon the summer, what is plus for the national team is, of course, that Ari moved to a bigger and better club league than playing in the second division in Sweden. And, and now, hopefully, also, he will play as a left fullback. He did that his first game with them, so that's a plus, of course, for the national team. Also a plus if Salve get playing time now, because if he should stay in the national team, he, he needs playing time, of course, that he didn't have in, in Copenhagen. I also looking forward to follow Egget, who moved, as you know, to Belenenses. That uh, I hope that he can start playing again now, because I think he is a, a player with potential. So I really hope he will come back. Otherwise, yeah, you see the squad there. You can can ask whatever you like. Before we take questions, if we look upon the just shortly on the situation, and and I don't like to speculate a lot, but facts is I can say that that. If we win three games, including, uh, including uh, beating Albania at home in September, we definitely end up in the second spot. And maybe we don't even need three, three wins, but if we have three wins, we are in the second spot. So uh, as when we have spoken to the players, and, and, and uh, I haven't spoken to everyone, but what we will say to them is, of course, that, but also now that we, we really have a a realistic chance anyway, so it's really an interesting period coming up now and, and uh, I think if we can have all the players fit and no silly suspensions that we have during the spring, then, then I think we have a realistic chance anyway to end up at least as a second team. And if we beat Swiss in the, in the first game in September, we can of course also have a chance to end up as, as the first team. But. Uh, Speculation is one thing. We have to win our own matches. That's the most important thing. But it's been very positive. Gunnar has spoken to, to almost all players, so everybody is positive. So. And it's an important preparation for us now to, to play this friendly. And it's nice to play it at home too, of course. So, uh, so uh, I'm really looking forward to meet the players again and start the preparations both for Faroe Islands, but also use that as a important first step before the Swiss and Albania game that are very decisive for the future. Shall we say anything else, Amy? No, just if they want to ask something. Yeah, if they are kind, they can do that. Yeah. If it's a friendly question. It's, an, uh, it's a question on the telephone. I take the friendly and uh, Amy take the ugly ones. Any <laughs> other Þannig <laughs> Any regrets not picking Aaron earlier? Was that an option? No, I mean we have spoken to him for the yeah almost since I started. We we wanted him in for the for the first camp that we had in January last year, so uh, I mean, I, I think I had a good dialogue with dial talks with him, good talks with him, and uh, and I mean, I tried to motivate him to to play with the Iceland team, but uh, he took this, this decision, and as he said to me, he had given it a lot of thoughts. That's why he waited so long. Also, I think so. We couldn't do more than we did. I think it's. I mean, it's up to him. And as I said, I mean. It's more a moral thing now. I, I can agree with, with what uh, Koesi and Gay said, that, that uh, if you give a person education and, and give him this international experience in the youth national teams, but, but as, the, as the rules are today, it's, it's a moral thing. So I can't do anything about it. Can you understand this decision to play for USA? Yeah, I mean, if you look upon football today, what 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 is... How, how players move and everything gets more and more international. I, I don't know if he thinks that that US is is uh, bigger or better for him. Probably, I don't know. Is 
statement from the Federation said that they felt that it was pressured, or not pressured, but a third party was having an influence. Did you feel that was the case? A second or third party had? I can't say that when I spoke to him because uh, when we talked and I tried to, to give him motives to, to play with the Icelandic team, he, he didn't say anything else that, the, that he thought it was the best choice for him to, to, to his football career and things like that. So I don't know if it's any third party behind. I think all of these questions should be answered by him. It's only speculation from us. It's not nice to be asking speculation, speculative uh, questions. We, uh, we sat here in a press conference uh, almost a, a year ago and, and we were in a similar situation asking whether Aaron should be picked and I believe your answer, Lars, was something along the lines that at the moment the information you had um, was that he was pretty far behind Björn Bergman Sigurðsson who at the time was maybe in the line to chase a spot, competing for a spot with Alfred and Kolbeinn. Did you ever feel that maybe that comment um, didn't go so well with Arn? I can't really answer that either because uh, he never mentioned it to me anyway. So, so uh, I mean, my that my talks with him was always that that we wanted him in the national team and and uh, he was welcome if he wanted, but he wanted to postpone his decision all the time, as I remember it from last year. So, uh, so. Uh, all talks I have with him has been around getting to the Icelandic team. I don't know. I mean, I mean, if if I look at it from my point of view, I mean, it's it's a tough competition today to take a, a striker place in in the starting eleven in Iceland team. But, but uh, I think it's rather tough in at least equal tough in the U.S. team. So I don't think that has anything to do with it. But that's my speculation. I don't know. So for me, it's history, so I think we can't do anything else. So I agree with Heyman that it's no meaning speculating anymore. It's, I mean, he's taken his decision. If, if you want to know more, you, you have to ask him. Were there uh, any other players in the Icelandic league that were on the brink of selection? No, not for this time. I can't say that we had anyone. We have uh, some players abroad also that are close to the squad, but this was what we thought was, was uh, the best for this time. And If you look upon the squad, I think when you get into to the, the final phase of, of uh, uh, a qualification group like this, I think it should be really, really good players now coming in. And what we needed most now is to find more, more uh, defenders and fullbacks especially. And that's when they played well, well and they are young and still under Hopefully they can take more steps, so just let them come in and, and feel the atmosphere in the, in the national team. And maybe they are ready to, to compete about a, a place in the squad. So for the moment, no one else in the domestic league was close to, to come into the squad, even if we have some players that we, of course, find interesting and, and try to follow. Happy that almost all the players except Sylvie are playing regular football now, even though it's maybe one of the best last season. Yeah. It looks like it is like looks like a rather good position for the players now. We are very glad if they are playing. So the league that haven't started, they play friendlies anyway, so so they at least in the competition to play everybody now. So that's really nice. Uh, no, I haven't given up. I had I have a talk with a, a guy close to him without mentioning any names, and uh, I haven't spoken to Bjorn myself because we took the decision to wait and see what is happening in Wolverhampton now, and and uh, I think it's difficult for the moment to say how will it influence to go at another step down in, in the division. So we have to follow him, of course, now during during the games coming up for him and see how, he, how he's performing. But for the moment, we think these four strikers is ahead of him until we know a little bit more of his standard when, when the league starts for Wolverhampton. Uh, Mr. 
Is there any sorry? Is there any reason that you decided not to to have three goalkeepers? It seems quite common that in uh, for friendly matches that you have a maybe use the space and, and have an extra goalkeeper. The Umidur has been well, you could say a regular maybe in the in the larger squads that you've chosen. Yeah. No, the reason now is that we wanted to to be as effective as possible uh, as we come so close now to the to the last part of the qualification. So we thought that that we brought Ögmund in some some uh, times now is because we wanted him to have the experience if something happened to to Gunnleifer or Hannes. Uh, but I think they still are number one and number two in in uh, the goalkeeper list. So just because of be as effective as possible now in our preparations for Fair Islands and it's only one training also. Yeah. It's only one real training, so it's, it, uh, it's difficult to give the third keeper a, a quality training when you have so little time. Now he knows the atmosphere if some one of these guys get injured or suspended, so and if something happened on the way to Monday or when we train, it's easy to, to get that commander in in that case. Is it your definite third choice? No, nothing is definitive when it comes to football. You never know. It, you have more keepers. I mean, now the keepers we have in Norway are start playing, so uh, so uh, nothing is 100% is written in stone. Is there any player coming here with uh, some directions about how many minutes, minutes he can play? No. But you're most worried about the defense. Yeah, I think we we are lacking competition. I mean, these guys are are good, but uh, I mean, we need more more players to to sharpen up the the competition about the starting positions there. I think, and I mean, with all respect to some of them, they they not the youngest ones either. So we hope that some younger players will take the step now and come into the competition of, of taking a starting position in the squad. Otherwise, I think it, if, if these guys are playing now and are fit, I mean, I think it looks rather well, as someone asked before, that it looks like they are playing and they are doing well. I mean, for instance, Johan who was in and out from the team last year. I started the season very well. I saw him two games on TV. and So uh, I think it looks positive. And as I said, the, the most important thing now is to be quite honest among the best players. I mean, we, we, we don't want players like Gylfi or Aron being suspended or injured. That is, that is of course, important for the squad. Then it looks positive, I think. I think we have a, a realistic chance, how big it is, but I think it looks rather good. We would like to surprise everybody and go to Brazil. So you're more optimistic now than... than uh Earlier in the summer? Yeah, you never know during the summer. I mean, uh, we don't know about some of the players either. I mean, uh, some have changed clubs now, and you never know what happened when they change clubs. But it looks positive, I think, if you if you compare it with uh, what can happen during a summer. But you have question marks. I mean, uh, if you look upon Ragnar, for instance, I mean, Copenhagen started very badly, and he was on the bench one game. So you, you never know with coaches, they are crazy. We are crazy, yes. <laughs> and one more thing, maybe on the on the goalkeepers, because Hannes has been a clear favorite. Maybe you could say in the in the qualifying stages, he's been starting the games. But this summer, I think many would agree with the opinion that Gunnlaugur has been fantastic, while Hannes has maybe not been performing at his best. And everybody saw him yesterday, and he's been fantastic in the in the big games in Europe as well. Is there any change of plan with the number one, number two scenario with the keepers? No, I mean it's too early to say, but but uh, I agree with you. When the what I have seen and what I heard from Gunnar and Hamer that that uh, Gunnleifer has played really, really well, and I saw him yesterday. He did one mistake for the whole game and some really good saves. So it, it's getting a tough competition, and at the same time Gion Leifer is a really positive character in the squad even if he's been on the bench most of the time so so uh, it's it's uh, definitely open or we will we play the matches we will have to follow them and, and see how they how they perform in the club and, and in the clubs and on training
So I agree with you. I I have the same feeling, and and seeing him, lo- as I said, lost yesterday was he was really good. So uh, Hannes shouldn't be too short. You never know.